Cheers and welcome my friends, I'm Horatrak and we are playing Stellaris with the new Synthetic Dawn DLC. Paradox has been so kind and has given me a code for it, uh, free of charge. If you want to buy it, it is out now, today on the 21st of September for 9 .99, um on the Steam store. There's a link in the description if you want to follow that. And uh, I've been wanting to create a video way sooner, but I've been super ill. I have not been able to create any content. I apologize for that sincerely. I'm sorry. We're going to have a bunch of videos next couple of days as I get better and better. I'm going to do some tutorial videos looking at the new mechanics, changes and all that stuff. Um, there's an accompanying patch to the DLC, the 1.8 Chopek patch, um, that has a lot of quality of life improvements. I'm really happy to see the game improve like that. So, for example, taking planets out of sectors no longer costs any influence. Destroying sectors no longer costs any influence. You can build buildings on sector planets. The duplicating generals, uh, admirals has been have been fixed, no longer the case. Um, ships will no longer attack mining stations out of their own free will if they're not set to be... Um, aggressive. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff in there. I'm really happy that they continue to improve that. But Synthetic Dawn is all about the robot empires, all about the machine empires that you can now play from the very beginning if you want to. We're going to play the collectors. Um, we're going to go through these very quickly. I've actually created them um, off screen so um, that we can save a little bit of time. Um, so these are the phenotypes for machine empires in here they all look really cool these were the last to be, be uh, to be in but we're gonna take these guys the the old standard one because they look most like their creators um they got a backstory though so the collectors were created as the wardens to care for the material needs of the sildor um they took over more and more duties as the sildori retreated into their own minds centuries have passed since the last sildori embarked on their inward journey we'll see what what's up with that in a second and although their robotic wardens still watch over them as faithfully as ever their programming has changed maybe it was something one of the sildori said when waking up for a short period maybe it was a simple file corruption after trillions of computing cycles no one knows except the collectors what is known though is that instead of being content with caring only for the sildori the collectors now aim to collect all organic life in the galaxy put them to sleep just like the sildors whether they like it or not so we are we're basically rogue servitors that's uh, one of our civics which means that we originally started out as machines that were just caring for um the race that created us but at some point something changed and now we're actually the dominant species in there and you'll see in a second why that is for uh, in our particular backstory so we got collectors um nothing new in there we've got the machine names these are now in three variations of them that's also pretty nice um actually don't want those yeah, that's that's kind of fine. And we are logic engines and we have enhanced memory. So they're all new traits for, for the machines. Uh, we have 200% habitability everywhere. We have more society physics engineering output and an enhanced memory because these guys have to run for a very long time. But we are luxurious, so we have um, more building costs. We also take longer to build. So we're not going to be growing very fast. <laughs> Um, this is just how we look. Uh, our, our first leader is going to be Collection Unit Alpha. And the ruler is, uh, title is going to be Grand Collector. Um, and these are our creators. This is our creator race. Um, I went for the spells, Space Elvish look because that's exactly what these guys are. They are Sildor or Sildori. Sildori are a highly intelligent and very long-lived race. But that has also led to them being hesitant and rigid. They think something over dozens of times before they even start to contemplate an action. After millennia of technological and spiritual research, they have found a way to enter paradise with their minds. The downside of this is that their bodies still need to be kept alive to support their minds, even after passing to the other side completely. So they built the collectors, then called wardens, to take care of the needs of their bodies, allowing them to stay in paradise in perpetuity. The entire population made the transition centuries ago, but something has gone wrong with their wardens recently. Um, they now call themselves collectors. <laughs> so these are their these are their names. That's fine. Um, this is these are the traits of our subspecies. So they're quite intelligent, quite venerable. It's actually not useful since they really won't be able to work any of the on any of the buildings other than live in their own habitats and be super pampered. Um, they're non-adaptive, slow breeders, and sedentary, just to fit the backstory. This is more of a roleplay thing. Our homeworld name is going to be Sildor, and we live in the in the our star name is the Gentle Mother. 
Uh, we live on a continental world because that fits these guys the most. Right, these are all civics. So this has been uh, expanded. Now next to the hive mind, we have the machine intelligence. If you put that, th uh, uh, take that thing in the middle, the gestalt consciousness, you can either pick hive mind or machine intelligence. Um, so our, our leaders are immortal. Um, our recruitment cost is doubled. We have to build our own pops so fair, uh, so so standard. Uh, we cannot follow the psionic, biological, or synthetic ascension paths. We have we have other ways though. We can, for example, take an ascension perk that allows us to transform worlds, terraform worlds into machine worlds. It gives us increased production because all the um, fluff that the organics need has been has been removed. It's completely optimized for production. Um, and we cannot research robot or food tax. That's interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, we get more influence um, because we have no faction. So I guess we kind of need that influence buff. And we gain two additional core sector systems just because we are a lot better at uh, managing things. And then there are a bunch of bunch of civics over here. There are three civics that sort of exclude each other. The determined exterminators are just out there to kill everyone or all the organics, but they have no problems with other synth empires. Then we have the Driven Assimilators. These are basically Stellaris version of the Borg. They're going out there to turn everyone into a cyborg. And then the Rogue Servitors, um, serving robots that have, um, in some form or fashion, become the dominant species, whereas the organics are just out there um, having fun, being pampered. And then we have the Unitary Cohesion, just because, um, yeah, we're the collectors and we are kind of a collective, so we're sort of sticking together. There are a bunch of them. Um, in here and that's about all that we really need to know we have a nice little voice pack that's new self-destruct sequence initiated very Five, nice four three two one alert possible organic life form detected yeah we got okay let's see here let's see the, the only way to make peace with others is to make peace with yourself nice right <laughs> Okay, uh, that's our empire name. Uh, everything is fairly standard. Um, this is sort of the sign of our guardianship. And we're going to go for missile weapons because apparently missile weapons have been massively overworked. They now have a chance to retarget. Um, every time they retarget again, the chance to retarget becomes lower. But uh, at least they won't just vanish into thin air after their target has been destroyed, which should make these um, massively more useful. I want to try them out. We're going to stick to warp travel and we're going to actually restrict the whole galaxy to warp travel. Um, since I feel that um, the AI would probably be better able to cope with that if um, everyone has the same type of FTL, because then there aren't not nearly as many variables for them to to go through. We're going to stay with the avian ships because I find them the most elegant. And that's about it. These are our guys. All right, then. So let's um, start with this. We're going to have a huge galaxy, four arms. And you can now randomize the amount of empires and stuff. So there are a lot of new options in here. No advanced AI styles. I don't want that uh, maximum number of fallen empires. There are also now um, fallen machine empires. So that's going to be nice. You can now increase or decrease the amount of primitive civilizations that you have in a game. Very nice. Um, crisis strength. We have this no longer scales with the amount of habitable worlds. You can scale, scale that individually. And I'm going to boost that all the way up. So we're going to have a crazy endgame crisis. Habitable worlds. I decided to do the exact opposite of what I did in the uh, Going Tall series. Just for, just for funsies. Let's see how that actually plays out. Um, so... We should have a very populated um, galaxy that at some point gets a massive attack. <laughs> That's going to be fun. The AI aggressiveness, I turned that down to normal. Because um, I didn't, I, it didn't really look like the like the high AI aggressiveness did all that much for us um, in the last game. Didn't really feel like they, there were a lot of aggressives in there. Um, difficulty insane. Only warp jump is allowed to make it easier for the AI to actually... Do something against me, Empire Placement is going to be random. All right, let's jump in. Let's make that happen. Um, so this is the, the normal backstory, but we've got our own backstory. Um, so we don't really need that. We are here to um, collect all the, um, all the normal organic beings and actually give them our, our own version of tender loving care. Um, right, so this is our capital planet, Sildor. Oh, we actually got a really nice capital planet, 20-sized. That's pretty good. 
And you can see these are these are our our original guys, our creators, the the Sildor. And they're super happy because they have the mandatory pampering um, uh, species, right? So they want for nothing, right? They want for nothing. Where while while their minds are over there in the in the paradise. Their, their bodies and all their needs are super taken care of. Um, they're producing some unity, but that's about all they can do. So their traits aren't really all that important. I actually um, hobbled myself quite a bit by making these guys slow to grow. Because servitors actually get some, uh, some additional morale. Um, they get more influence and more resource production if they have... Um, uh, 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 40%, I think, 40% is the max of um, the population of their creators or, or just of organic biotrophies, uh, is what these guys are called, um, in their population. So just because it, um, I think the reasoning behind that is that it frees up processing power when these guys can sort of fulfill their original programming, um, then they can do more other stuff, can, can do it better. Whereas if they have no organics, they sort of become concerned and they are, Ask themselves, what am I actually doing? I was built for another purpose. So that's actually a really cool idea, I gotta say. Um, these guys um, take a lot of consumer goods, like <laughs> a lot. We're really, these guys want for nothing. And then we have our own guys, um, our robots, um, 0.5 consumer goods. I'm guessing that is just um, spare parts and all that stuff that we need to to keep them running. Very good. And these guys, these guys live in the organic sanctuary. Uh, sanctuary provides a sealed environment where organics can thrive in a safe and above all controlled manner. <laughs> so that's that's kind of nice. Um, all right, and we have um, a special for the, the machines is that we have these nutrient paste facilities. <coughs> these use various industrial byproducts to create a thick paste that is an excellent source of nutrients for organics. With the addition of chemical flavoring, the paste can be molded into approximations of most prepared food compositions. Seven out of 10 organics can't tell the difference. And our our um, masters um, really won't be able to tell the difference since they are completely somewhere else. You could tell them even, you, you could call them absent-minded <laughs> if you wanted to. Right, so we're gonna be, we're gonna be starting to, to build our first pops like right away, right away. Um, Got a lot of food on that planet that we don't need. I guess we're gonna go for this one. Build a pop. Uh, we're gonna build a collector. These guys are gonna get built more slowly. Yeah, you can see that. It's, it's gonna be difficult for us to get a lot of people, but um, that's something that we can do now, and that is uh, robo-modding. That's part of the, of, of the new thing. So uh, once we research that, we'll actually be able to change the, the traits that we have. And I have some pretty significant um, modding in mind for these guys. We're gonna become great. Um, the Ascension perks, um, as I told you, there, uh, there are a couple new ones. Um, which is pretty nice. Uh, one one huge change is that the master builders um, now require zero point power, um, but it automatically gives you the mega engineering if you don't have it already, which is super good. No more praying to RNGs, it's just perfect. Grand. Um, yeah, we can go for machine worlds. Um, so pops living on machine worlds have their resource output increased by 15%. Um, we probably got to use these sparingly because we generally want our our organics, our biotrophies um, on most of our planets. And then we can also go for the synthetic age, which gives us more machine modification points and uh, reduces the cost for, for changing our people. So that's that's pretty nice. I like that. Also, the traditions have been changed. So we don't have a diplomacy tree. We have a versatility thing where we can form federations, do different stuff. Domination is now a tree that actually... Uh, focuses on keeping your vassals instead of integrating them, which is really good. You can also take a civic um, if you're organic. That's called Star Lords, which reduces their um, their unrest, increases the trust that they have, and basically makes it makes you able to have a lot of vassals, which is which is really nice. All right then. So this is our leader um, collection unit alpha. Um, leaders work a little bit differently now um, since they can have multiple levels. I mean, our guys are also immortal, but yeah, they're gonna have they're gonna have more levels. Takes a while. Also, we have a core sector governor. So one governor is governing all the core sector planets. Super good addition. I'm really happy about that. Um, very very good. Okay. So in terms of researchers, actually. 
These two are not bad. Particles, very nice research area, um, but we are missile based. Let's try to see if we can't get a genius. Oh, come on! <laughs> and then we got a colonization guy. Kind of don't need that. Mm, okay, we're gonna we're gonna try to snag up some some geniuses since our guys are immortal. It's well worth um, actually trying to get a genius. But on the other hand, our um, the cost for getting leaders is massively increased, which is a bit of a problem. We're gaining a bunch of unity because of our our bio trophies, and I'm gonna put down a um, what do we call it now? Uplink node. I'm gonna put that down as well. Since I want a bunch of unity, it's actually gonna be good. All right then. So research. Let's start uh, with the proper game. Sorry about the um, uh, waffling on for too long. We're gonna go for um, physics lab. Yeah, we're gonna be all about the research this time. Bio lab, of course, and engineering facility. Let's just get that out of the way. Let's get good labs. Uh, I'm not gonna fall behind in terms of research. Where are we in our spiral galaxy? Okay, so we are actually pretty well placed, I'd say, um, on one of the edges. Certainly not gonna be as cutthroat as, let's say, this area. We have a lot of empires um, brushing up against one another. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. So, science ship, survey that system, and then we're gonna sort of... Uh, Go into all these systems that are around us. Actually, we don't have that many systems around us. Hmm. Let's see how many of them are habitable. So, that's a thing. Why Why are you not able to, to go to these? Survey all celestial bodies. Where? What? Not sure why it doesn't do that. We'll see how it goes. Um, we also want to send our ships into these systems just to to test that out. Maybe they're not allowed to move in there, but that would be really odd. Maybe it's just too many orders queued up. I don't know. Right, so our ships are just going to jump in, have a look, and then... Oh, right, no, you're already getting over there. Let's see what is at the end of our uh, of our spiral arm. That is sort of the, the area that I want to expand to, so that I can hop onto the next spiral arm. That's probably going to be good. Yeah, that's I think that's enough orders. All right then, let's unpause. Let's get cracking. Gentle mother is going to be surveyed. We've got our construction ship. All the costs for ships have been increased um, quite a bit actually. A colony ship now costs five hundred, which is. It's not great, but I, th I think it's a good change. It's a good change because it nerfs um, early heavy colonization a bit. You, I mean, 500 is actually significant, whereas the cost for spaceport has been reduced to 300 uh, minerals. That's quite nice, I think. How are we doing on the planet? We're not building anything there, right? No. Ah, we got a growing pop over here. Gotta be, I think... Anomaly discovered. Uh, we've got an anomaly with a 40% failure risk. Um, anomalies now always have a minimum failure risk of 5%. Um, deliberately crafted structures on the planet's surface. Really? That's interesting. No, leave that be for now. Uh, we don't want to have a look at that. Um, survey speed plus 25%. That's real nice. That's like really good. Um, could we probably want to go discovery? Discovery has been boosted. Like this gives us more survey speed. This still gives us research points, more research alternatives, experience gain, and assist research now also produces unity. Like uh, this is a very worthwhile pick now if you're actually going for science and stuff. And uh, we definitely want that. Okay, so we got the first um, first couple of building opportunities. So let's queue those up. Um, oh yeah, military stations apparently have been boosted in terms of hull points and stuff. So that's good. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, that's with all the habitable planets. Man, we got massive amounts of them. Massive amounts. Everywhere. Okay, that's gonna be a very interesting game. We're gonna have a lot of very strong empires. Dense and strong empires. I think it's gonna be super interesting. System surveyed. Okay, gentle mother has been fully surveyed. Uh, we've got some research in here that we can that we can grab. Um, do we want to? I mean, probably, probably um, build a research station over there. Then once you're done, 
we have to have a little bit of a look at our energy credits and we're done with the first thing i think we're just gonna go for discovery i mean what else makes sense um synchronicity is now different for robots so this is gonna reduce the likelihood that our leaders break down they're basically immortal but they can break down so it's a bit of a thing robot build speed increased by 33 percent oh man that's pretty nice actually Building build speed, um, ship building speed, fire rate in our, inside our borders. Unrest is reduced. We have no problem with unrest. All organic sanctuaries are upgraded to organic paradises. In addition, the happiness of all biotrophies is, incre is increased by 10%. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm, I'm really tempted. I'm really tempted to take that one. And adopting everything will give us... Oh, more influence. Nice. No, I think we're going to go for the discovery for now, though. Um, just because I want to I wanna do the server and I, wanna, I want the science points. And we'll probably be able to do something. Uh, leader has gained a level. That's very good. And we've discovered alien life. Wonderful. Prepare the gift baskets. <laughs> because we're the rogue servitors. That's what we say. Historic discovery has been made by the CNS scientific module on Durascodon 2. The planet is teeming with alien organics. Though none of the new life forms appear to possess the self-awareness required to appreciate collector pampering, it is likely only a matter of time before we encounter beings that do. Yay! More organics to pamper. Well, more organics to put to sleep and uh, to send to paradise. Well, for now, I'm actually going to end it here. Um, we're going to have another episode out very soon. I thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. It's especially helpful in the first episode of a series. Helps it up to show up in search results. Helps out the channel. Helps out me. So I do appreciate it. If you did not enjoy it um, and you're a horrible monster, hit that dislike button. <laughs> or let, just let me know what uh, you did not like. That's much more helpful. And uh, yeah, if you have anything else to say uh, to me, then leave it there. If you want to see more of the series, consider subscribing. And I hope I see you in the next episode. Thank you very much and bye bye.